To be hanged, drawn, and quartered was a punishment in England for men found guilty of high treason. The sentence was most common in the Middle Ages, particularly during the reign of King Edward I from 1239 to 1307, and continued for a period of several hundred years. For reasons of public decency, women convicted of high treason were instead burnt at the stake. To hang, draw, and quarter someone consisted of the following. He was dragged on a wooden frame, usually by a horse, to the place where he was to be publicly put to death. He was then hanged by the neck for a short period of time, or until almost dead. The man was usually dragged alive to the quartering table, although in some cases men were brought to the table dead or unconscious. A splash of water was employed to wake the man if unconscious. Then he was laid down on the table. His genitalia were removed and a large cut was made in his gut. He would then be disemboweled by spooling his intestines out on a device that resembled a dough roller. Each removed organ would be burned before his eyes, and when he was completely disemboweled, his head would be cut off. The body would then be cut into four pieces. This step was sometimes accomplished by tying each of the four limbs to a different horse and spurring them on in different directions. The king would then decide where the head and the four quarters of the body would be displayed. Usually the head was sent to the Tower of London, and, as in the case of Scottish patriot William Wallace, the other four pieces were sent to different parts of the country. The body pieces served as a reminder and a warning to all about what happens when you go against the king. The head was generally parboiled in brine, while the quarters were more often prepared in pitch for longer lasting deterrent displays. Salt and cumin seed would be added during the boiling process. The salt was to prevent putrefaction and the cumin seed to prevent birds pecking at the flesh. Before it was clearly defined in common law, treason was based on an allegiance to the sovereign from all subjects aged 14 and over, and it remained for the king and his judges to determine whether that allegiance had been broken. It was not until 1351 that the Treason Act was written, after parliamentary demands were made to clarify the law. It was enacted at a time in English history when a monarch's right to rule was indisputable, and was therefore written principally to protect the throne and sovereign. The Act declared that a person had committed high treason if they were compassing or imagining the death of the king, his wife, or his eldest son and heir, violating the king's wife, his eldest daughter if she was unmarried, or the wife of his eldest son and heir, levying war against the king in his realm, adhering to the king's enemies in his realm, giving them aid and comfort in his realm or elsewhere, counterfeiting the great seal or the privy seal or the king's coinage, knowingly importing counterfeit money, and killing the chancellor, treasurer, or one of the king's justices. The act, however, did not limit the king's authority in defining the scope of treason. It contained a proviso giving English judges discretion to extend that scope whenever required, a process more commonly known as constructive treason. It also applied to subjects overseas in British colonies in the Americas, but the only documented incident of an individual there being hanged, drawn, and quartered was that of Joshua Teft, an English colonist accused of having fought on the side of the Narragansett during the Great Swamp Fight. He was executed in 1676. The use of the word drawn has caused a degree of confusion. The Oxford English Dictionary's definition of draw is to draw out the viscera or intestines of, to disembowel. But this is followed by, in many cases of executions, it is uncertain whether this or to drag a criminal at a horse's tail to the place of execution is meant. There is also debate amongst modern historians. Historian Ram Sharan Sharma writes that, as in the popular hanged, drawn, and quartered, as drawn follows hanged, it is to be referred to as the disemboweling of the traitor. Sharma is not the only historian to support this viewpoint, as the phrase, hanged until dead, before being drawn and quartered, occurs in a number of relevant secondary publications. However, historian Ian Mortimer disagrees. He argues that drawing may be mentioned after hanging because it was a supplementary part of the execution. Judges delivering sentences also seem to have some confusion over the term drawn, with some sentences being summarized as drawn, hanged, and quartered, instead of hanged, drawn, and quartered. After the Crimes Act of 1814 was passed, 
the sentence of hanging, drawing, and quartering was changed to drawing, hanging until dead, and posthumous beheading and quartering, before being abolished in 1870, although the monarch's right to replace hanging with beheading remained. The death penalty for treason was abolished by the Crime and Disorder Act of 1998. In some places, where the American War of Independence developed into a fierce civil war among American factions, there are recorded cases of both sides resorting to hanging, drawing, and quartering, both loyalists and patriots finding reasons to construe their opponents as being traitors, deserving of such a fate. 